Okay, let's talk about your comic. Uh, yeah. You're up to issue what right now? Uh, issue three starts uh, Kickstarter on the 15th of August. Um, so basically, I, I got into comics, um, you know, collecting for the last 20 years. Um, Miller, yeah. Miller, Mark Miller said that he's going to do a talent contest. I had a look at it. Yeah, I might do that. And then Mrs. tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, you're going to enter that contest or what? You know, you're always going on about comic books. And stuff. all right, fine, I'll do it. And uh, I was lucky enough to win and, um, yeah, got published uh, by Image and um, in the Miller World Annual way back in 2016. And, uh, yeah, we did a, a four-page four page hit girl story with uh, Loki cover art. He's now, this is uh, Oscar Yildrum. And lots of violence and heads flying everywhere and stuff. And only a, a short four-page story. There's me. Yay, I'm a business suit. Because that's the only photo I had at the time. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, very lucky. I uh, thought, yeah, that's great. I'm going to be writing Marvel in no time. Yay. And, no, of course, that's how many how, <laughs> how many copies of that um, issue have you got? I had 100. I have two left. <laughs> So, yeah, so you bought a hundred uh, and you basically <laughs> sold it out, or did you give it away? Uh, no, I used it um, for the first Kickstarter. I used them as a um, a bonus, uh, like for an extra yeah. pound or something, you know. So mm. Um, mm. it was yeah, just a Kickstarter's uh, about trying to deliver. It's really hard. Uh, you got to deliver value for money for people. So if they're gonna if they're gonna put something down on your book, you can't. You got to see. What extras can I add that will make people might not cost me a lot of money, but people could see value in yeah. and contribute maybe a bit more money to the campaigns, or they see it as a as a good reward. Um, and yeah, I've done a couple of conventions uh, over the last well, not last year um, because everything was shut down um, over the last couple mm. of years, and uh, sold a few books then. So this land was originally printed two years ago. Uh, along with another yeah. book of ours, Schism. Where is it? Schism, which is a sci-fi. Um, we call it, it's like a, we say it's like Battle Battle Angel Alita meets Memento sort of thing. And then okay. there's this land, this land. So all the art is completed for all five issues of this land, and. Um, yeah. But the colouring and the lettering hasn't been done on three, four, five. So there's 140 pages there. And yeah. just through, I had a bad back injury and had back surgery last year. Between COVID and everything, I couldn't afford to keep, I couldn't, I didn't have my own money to keep putting towards stuff. You know, I was thinking about selling all my collection and all sorts of stuff, um, which probably would have helped. Yeah. But you know what it's like? It's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? It's something you'd be like, <laughs> it's like, ah. Yeah, it's, it's a really tough one, yeah. and I do have a pile of books that I am trying to sell off. But, Once in a blue um, moon, it's, it's it's really hard to um, oh my god, just just packing and shipping shipping stuff. Um, so yeah, I won a spot in the Middlewood Talent Contest, got published, and then realised I didn't know Dick. So I went around mm. all the conventions in the UK. Uh, most of them have trade days, and um, mm. which a whole lot of classes and and um, uh, speeches given by artists and writers uh, from across the UK. Um, and I was going to those trade shows and just asking lots of questions and networking and, um, you know, buying writers' uh, beers at the bar afterwards and stuff like that and just yeah. trying to get into their heads and figure out how they got there. And, um, and you know, getting into – there's a lot of – stuff and knowledge out there but you got to find out what works best for you you know you learn about things like the story circle you learn you know you, there's books like um all my actual comic process books are downstairs unfortunately but i've got a big stack of them yep. and um it, it, most of them say the same things but um every now and then there's a little gem and one or two of them that just sticks in your mind and a lot of it was about there's stuff these these books don't tell you and it's you know it's about 
writing for the space you've got and and uh, learning about page turns and odd and even numbers when it comes to printing and uh, you know yeah. it's always in lots of four so you can't have a 25 page comic book it just is impossible yeah <laughs> you can but there'll be a blank page on the back <laughs> you know or, or you end up putting, like up putting an advert on there yeah yeah well, you end up putting an advert on it but it's still a waste of well. you know you still have to do the four page thing it just yeah yeah, yeah. 22 it's, pages it's, 26 it, 20 it's uh, bit, 32 especially so, so the going back to the whole every comic book could be someone's first so you either have to have a decent recap page at the start which doesn't drown people in too much words. It just gives a, a low overview of things um, previously on sort of thing. Or, hey, uh, you know, for this land one, um, we started off. So this land is basically a future New Zealand, right, where people have developed yeah. powers and abilities of the Māori gods. Um, originally, the story didn't involve uh, the Māori god side of things, but uh, the story came about when... Um, I wanted to do something, they say write what you know, and I wanted to do something very New Zealand based. And yeah. I saw, a, I, I don't know, what does the future New Zealand look like? I haven't read anything that talks about what the future looks like. You see all these sci-fi and steampunk stories of post-apocalyptic Britain and yeah. America. What does the future New Zealand look like? And uh, there was the Kaikoura earthquake uh, when the harbour shot up five metres and um, all yeah. the boats were um, moored, I think they say it, and uh, marooned, moored. And it was like, oh, that's weird, because usually we have earthquakes and everything goes tumbling down. So, and about the same time, there was a story about the eighth forgotten continent and New Zealand having a very low sea shelf, and this continent was called uh, Tului Maui, uh, the land of Maui. And uh, I was like, well, what if that popped up? And if that whole yeah. continent came up, well, how would that change the structure of New Zealand and what would happen? You know, let's say, well, yeah. Auckland sits on a hundred dormant volcanoes, or is it a thousand? What if they all went up? What would happen to the people of Auckland then? You know, it's like, holy crap. And the that more reminds I, me of the, the with the X-Men of the Krakoa, you know, uh, the savage land. Well, I wrote this before yeah. Krakoa, so, but you're right. <laughs> So um, I wrote this in 2018. So it's, it still hasn't been yeah. published. So there's a few. Oh no, no, my my <laughs> core goes way back to the 2000. I mean, I, oh, sorry, that, that, um, yeah, yeah, the original Krakoa. Yeah, 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 the original yeah. one. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was interesting, and and the ball just started rolling, and so you know, so let's say, well, it, there's no electricity, there's no electronics in this after this huge geographic incident, you know, disaster that happens to the whole earth. How does that affect the world? Does the um, does this earth shift on its axis? How did this thing happen? Let's say the moon was destroyed, and the whole rotational pull of the earth was changed and then, you know, land r rose from the ground and, you know, what would happen to those people and, you know, to make things interesting. But what if they developed powers and abilities of the regions they were from, you know, sort of a little bit avatarish, a little bit, but not, not yeah. quite. So, you know, the people of Auckland, those who survived because you have a million people in Auckland then the population goes down to a hundred thousand. Those who survived, yeah. um, you know, their skin changed. They adapted to the heat of this lava flowed area, filled area. Some of them had the ability to manipulate the fire. Some of them had the ability to manipulate this thing I call mana steel, um, which, is a, which is a rare skill that only um, can be forged by uh, the people of Auckland, now called Axland, you know, very simple yeah. <laughs> term. Because Why Axland? Because it's hot, you know, it's... This is and you then, building your world yeah. and your universe yeah. that these creatures are these characters that they live in. And and this is the difference between like jumping on a book that's already been established for decades. Okay, we know who okay, I'm gonna come in and write about Wolverine. Oh, we know he just says bubble law, his thing goes snick, he's got yeah. these blades on his hands. And he's the best at what he you does. You know, everybody <laughs> knows Yeah, and everybody knows what he what he's doing, or who he yeah. is, who yeah. his friends are. Mm. No blank sheet. It's all done for you. They just come and yeah. write a story with these characters and they still fail. So yeah. here you are, so, like coming up with your own imagination, out of you know, yeah. out of your brain, having seen all these things. I, I love the world building. I, I really do. I think I mean because there's, I've got so there's, many worlds. 
<laughs> there's stuff I've done that will never see the page, but uh, you know, I needed yeah. the reasoning yeah. and and without giving too much away about the story because I want everyone to read it. So basically, um, th there's there's reasons why everything happens. So someone could come and challenge yeah. me and say, "Hey, why does that happen?" I have to read the book, yeah. but I know, and you know, there's it all does structurally make sense uh, and the reasoning yeah. and the stuff you don't need to know some stuff but as a reader mm. but as the writer i've made sure i've got yeah. my ducks in a row and there's no uh desuk desuks makana i can never say that one right um you know machine of god that comes in and magically <laughs> ma mag mag magically fixes everything yeah um but essentially the story is is this young woman called halna and uh, one day, um, she's got her own mysterious past and whatnot. And uh, she's yeah. basically on parole in Northland on the 600-mile beach because it's a big beach now. Yep. And um, the uh, out of the sky, uh, comet appears and it crashes around a fireplace where her nieces and nephews have been um, playing. And they're all entombed and, and, and trapped in uh, glass because when heat hits sand, you know, glass. Yeah. So, and out yeah. of this crash site walks out this guy who claims to be Tane, the uh, yeah. god of the forest. And they're like, F and what? And she knocks him out and they wake up, both wake up. Uh, he, she knocks him out and, and Tane wakes up in a jail cell uh, in the uh, in Auckland, which is called Axland. And uh, Tane convinces Helena to uh, free him and help him find the demigod Maui. And the story takes us, she goes to a pub at uh, the... Um, the Bombay so very Kiwi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. she, 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 gets, she has yeah, she goes the to local pub. Tavern. We'll say tavern then. She goes to a tavern. So the that's you know you sort of hole is it's an Aussie call it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where there's um where uh well for, oh, there's other things that happen between that. I won't get too much in the details. Sure. And Don't she give assembles, away too much. Yeah. She assembles yeah. a motley motley crew of uh, miscreants and mercenaries. And uh, they help her break Tane out of this uh, jail cell. And uh, they venture d down the road to, uh, or up the road, but that's another story, uh, to um, a place called the White Tomb, formerly known as Waitomo. And uh, you imagine if there was a huge geological, geographic disaster and a huge earthquake, there would be a couple of thousand yeah. tourists in Waitomo. And if they got trapped yeah. under there, how would they survive? What would happen to them? So the people, this is a place of thousands, of, hundreds of communities from around the world of these people who were trapped underneath the earth. They got it. They discovered an ancient cavern and they lived off the moss and the nutrients that they could. And eventually uh, they, their skin changed white, almost luminescent look because there's no yeah. light down there. And, uh, yeah. yeah, these people uh, had a war with the Axelanders and there's conflict and confrontation. And uh, we open up issue three where we – I don't know if I sent you the clip. We just had some animation come through. But uh, issue three, we start with a big kaiju fight between a Tanifa and a giant moa-type dude. That's the cover to three. And yeah, it's 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 all on like Donkey Kong. So uh, yeah, so now before you go on, a, before you go yeah, on, I didn't want to say too much. <laughs> yeah, before you go on, we know that Mark One is carrying your book here in New Zealand. Yeah, he's how many to, issues of yeah. your book? How many issues have they got? I mean, like how many numbers of each issue have they got? Because I'm I, sure someone yeah, who's watching this is going to go, okay, in New Zealand, especially if they're local. Here, they will go like, okay, I've heard about this book. The guy really told me. I mean, I'm interested now. I want to buy one, right? Like so last Chris, time we talked, Chris I wasn't has... so much into it. This time I'm like, I want one. <laughs> so Chris has two copies of issue one left and about six copies of issue two left. But uh, the next Kickstarter, which starts in, um, like I said, the 15th of August, all three issues will be available then, you know, as a bundle. Because uh, I've still got – I'm going to have to do okay. another uh, another print run of issue one, actually, because it's okay, very okay. low on those. So but, um, let's talk yeah, about the bundle one. Yeah. Let's talk about this bundle. How does the bundle work and how much is it? So everything's in uh, UK pounds, unfortunately. 
so I can't give you the right. exact translation. Usually, roughly, it's about double. Um, so to ship to New, for, to New Zealand is about twelve New Zealand dollars, and uh, a Perfect. book, a book is uh, because there's issue one's twenty. Well, issue one's thirty-two pages. Issue two is twenty-eight. Issue three is twenty-eight. And yeah, they're they're five pound each, which is just I think it's just under or just over ten New Zealand dollars a book, which yeah, it's it's an it's an ask. Yeah, I understand that. Sure. Um, so the, basically, like a forty-two bucks to get a send here to New Zealand, all three books. I think, yeah, that, now I think because it's about that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, so or, early on, or, you're saying that you had more. Or, early on, you're saying there's more stuff that you put in to make it more attractive to Kickstarter buyers. What is in those three bundles? Yeah. To make me want to buy it, right? You, you right. sell it to me. Okay, so because then I'll, you, know. you get a digital copy of each book as well. You also get a digital mm -hmm. ash can, which is basically uh, the first eight pages of issue one, uh, the first three pages of issue two, three, four, and five. So the intros to the everything. There's no text on four and five so you don't know what's going on because i didn't want to give away too much you see um you'll get a director's cut digital direct hey you get a director's cut digital director's cut yep. which has uh the script it has the pencils the inks and the colors all broken down so you can see how the book came together uh ashcan digital cut i think there's a bundle of other things like um uh digital posters and pinups and things like that so digital's great because it doesn't yeah it, it's stuff that the content like that's there people. and yeah, yeah. weight when you're shipping stuff it's all about weight um on top mm. of that we have a whole lot of pinups and posters from new zealand artists um mm. so uh craig peterson out of spain he's done a pinup for us for our character beach mm. Uh, Leo Artbro, who's just moved to Brisbane from New Zealand, uh, he's done a pinup of our character Rana. Uh, very fortunate, uh, my friend uh, Zach Howard, who's uh, drawn for Hellboy, uh, The Cape, and Venom, he did a pinup for us. And this is our lead helmet, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, Michael Mulapola, who New Zealand's best kind of artist is right. Far, yeah. for Michael, Michael or Michael, I haven't learned how to pronounce his name correctly because I'm an Mikel, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, he is, um, he's done, where is it? There's stuff everywhere. I'm, I'm stuff on the wall behind me. Uh, he's done an ama he's done two pinups for us, actually. So, one, oh, here it is. Hang on. Ugh. Okay, while you do that, let me ask, um, let me just say hi, hi to J uh, Jason. Hey, Jason, have you got a question? If you've got a question for uh, Mark that I haven't asked, um, <laughs> pop it in and I'll put it up. Cheers, Jason bro. knows everything. Um, <laughs> so he, he's did this amazing. This was the first print that was ever done for the book. And um, hmm. I've also uh, made it because uh, I'm into my action figures as well. I customize a lot of them. So I've also got a customized action figure of this uh, that's Helena's brother, Dre. And I am going to be sending. Where is that? Damn it. <laughs> so much stuff. Hey, where's the, where's the guy with the blue arm that I've seen all over Instagram? Ah, that's Funko right. Pops. Well, that, that has the, the Funko Pops. Right, here we go. Mm. Ah. So, we've got five. We've got five more minutes. Oh, right. We've got five, five more minutes. minutes. Tell me your Funko Pops and tell me all about them. Right, so this is Moa. Uh, this is a guy who is a metamorph, and he evolves into. Ah, oh, look at that! A giant Moa. Look at that one. So that is one a second. So, uh, so Jason's asking the question I asked him about, and it's it is a full arc six issues. Five issues. Five. There you go. Jason. And the, the it's, a, it's a five issues. It's a, right? So there's a third third issue kicks off on August fifteenth. And the next two, I'm not sure if we'll get them out by the end of the year, but I'm hoping to. The thing is, you can't wait till all five are out because if we don't hit the milestone each time, we don't know if we're going to get. Yeah. I'm confident we'll do it, but everyone's support helps. And this is this is yeah. uh, I did created a custom Marvel Legend, and I'm going to be sending this to Michael. Uh, 
how do you, uh, how do you, as a like, thank you how do you how do you end up with doing all this stuff because i'm i'm watching all you all this uh work are you how do you go about and who does it for you i do it all myself so basically like we were you guys haven't been in lockdown we've been in lockdown so i've i've bought yep. airbrushes so you've had and, the entire so you've I've, had a whole year to do this i've learned how to customize the crap out of stuff omnibus issue yes Yes, 20, 2040 omnibus issue. Absolutely. <laughs> Here's the way. Um, yeah. So there's some more art that's come out uh, Limit Break Customs and uh, Thunder Punch, uh, or another Kiwi artist, has um, done pinups for issue three. So I'm only using New Zealand artists for the pinups moving forward. Uh, one, a good mate of mine. Oscar Yildrim, though, who did the um, Hit Girl story with me, and he is done, he's done cover art for Loki. Uh, he did mm. this pin up for me, which is a tribute to Days of Future Past. Yeah. yeah. So there will be a variant. I remember, I remember that cover so well. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, I. He, na he nailed it. That is so, a, that is a, a glory up. day of. Um, Glory day of uh, X Men comics, as I'm concerned. Yeah, you know, so like the uh, like the ninety period issue issue three, which will be available uh, for backing on the fifteenth. There's also an option to get the variant cover, so there will be a comic book with this cover on it, which is fantastic. So, and the other little bundle thing I did, which is kind of cool, is <laughs> probably the most kiwi thing ever. Beer cozy, can cooler. <laughs> <laughs> because it packs flat and it's easy to ship. So yeah, there's lots, so we've got pins, we've got can coolers, we've got posters, we've got variant covers, we've got we've got coloring books as well. The thing about the coloring books, there's not going to be a third coloring book. The thing about the coloring books is there's a lot of issue four, issue five in here. You can see what's yeah. coming, but there's no um, it's well, not, yeah, 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 you don't, no you, you, you can see stuff yeah. coming, but you don't know what's coming. So, yeah, yeah. But, uh, the artist, so I'm going to uh, go back to, yeah. I'm going to go no, back to go. Jason's uh, question here. Uh, so, yeah. yes, how, how are the custom pop and uh, Marvel Legends? You know, how, how did you, like you said, you customized them, but how yeah. did you, you know, so, how did you build them? Like, did you design yeah. it yourself? Pretty so basically, yeah. I, f I found a body type that was similar to my char character. So this one was originally, right. who was this guy originally? I think it's a re he's a wrestler. No, no, no. Oh, this one's um, <sighs> Sophia, who, whoever plays Deathstroke in the D DC movies, he's in um, that vampire TV show with Anna Paquin. Anyway, Joe Magdaleno, Magna Joe, whatever. And anyway, this was that character, and so I um, stripped it down, uh, pulled it to bits, pro sanded it, primed it, and painted wait, it up. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So that's an actual Funko Pop toy figure. Yeah. Yep. That you re repainted and redid. So it's not like yep. you sent it to an artist yep. to design it. Okay, that's where I was no. going. That looks perfect. <laughs> yeah. Why does it so look it's perfect? A, it's an actual Funko Pop that's been re, repainted and redesigned. Yeah, repainted and little bits added, a lot of extras and stuff. So, yeah, hmm. very happy okay. with that. Uh, with the action figures, though, uh, a lot more work is involved. So with this hmm. one, for example, that was Red Hulk. Uh, I took his oh, okay. uh, hair off. There was Red Hulk. I took the hair off. We added some uh, tattoos. Uh, the um, uh, what's this? The, the Samoan tattoos because uh, he's of a Samoan heritage. Yeah. Uh, there, no, no, it's not Tamako. It's something else. It's uh, I should know. Tattoo. I yes, think it's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I um, studied all that. So yeah. You see all the uh, additional rock and chunks on his arm yep. and stuff. So that's all, uh, and his bed, I sculpted as well and painted. It's hard to see like this. 
But uh, that that's going straight to Mikkel for. What do you mean um, by sculpted? Oh, so what do you mean um, by sculpted? You get um, procreate putty and clay. So you know, it's, it's uh, molding, molding and sculpting clay, and then you get in and you draw the hairlines in with the with your with your little knife and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's quite, quite detailed. Quite proud of that one. But uh, that's that's going. That's a one of a kind. I've got some for the next couple of campaigns. I'll be these are available um, mm. as bundles. I think it's about fifty or sixty pounds. Not just for that, but you get everything else. The whole, so you, yeah, so yeah. you get a, you get a Funko Pop, you get the book, all the books, you get all the prints, you get everything with that. You get a pin, you get the you get the uh, bear stubby holder, can cooler, neoprene cooler holder. Every I got to be careful. Every place around the world's got a different name for the bloody things. I just call it stubby holder, but sure. yeah, yeah. Um, stubby's yeah. So these are available this time round. Hopefully, by the time the next mm -hmm. games campaign comes around to have some more marvel legends done so yeah um mm. i yeah it's it's kind of great it's great fun but that, that yeah mickle's done uh the poster this poster here and he's done another pin up yep. for us for issue four which i mm. may have let slip out uh because it was so good but um yeah that's coming a bit later down the line and uh sure. is he joy is he isabel joy uh, she's done a uh, print for issue four as well. So as far as the only things left to do for this Kickstarter, the coloring is underway and almost complete for issue three, and the lettering yeah. is almost complete as well. So as far as rewards done, everything's done except the printing of the comics and the mm -hmm. sketch rewards. So this, we, we do a whole lot of sketch rewards. So I've got a competition sure. at the moment that, where you can enter the draw to win a one-of-a-kind sketch cover. And uh, PR, the artist, is mail, mailing them all over from Poland. And, yeah, they're bloody brilliant. So he, he's got about a dozen issue ones without blank sure. covers. Yeah. So he can he can do the, do the yeah. art and, and then he sends them, sends them out to me or all around the world wherever we need it. So, yeah, we're... Things are going really well. Uh, it will be collected in trade. I think hopefully by next Christmas, uh, it will be more readily available in New Zealand. But we need to go on an issue by issue basis to get to yeah. the uh, to the end goal. So it, it, everyone's support is very much appreciated. Uh, whether whether that mm. be through Mark One Comics in Hamilton or backing the campaign online, and you can do anything from a, a pound to uh, I think the highest, and believe it or not, I, I never thought this would happen. You always, I'm told, you always should be put a ridiculous reward in. Someone backed mm. over 500 pounds last time, a guy from Amsterdam. I'm like, this can't be real. This is a joke. And I messaged him and I rang him up and he's like, no, no, this is real. Yep. And he bought, you can get yep. a original, original comic art, sketches. Yeah, he's, he's spent over 500 pounds. And I'm going to be sending that man a Christmas card every year um yeah um so yeah there's lots of stuff available uh yeah but uh it, it's but got, I, I think this is this is the um this is the um you know this is a new world order of things when it comes to comics which is like you're able to create your own universe your own following your own direct market because someone supports what you're doing and yeah, I think and the what, what's of what we have on the internet. So what's interesting about this book is there's um there's a bit of Tereo in it as well, and uh, one of the first things we int we introduce people to this new world, and within this new world, uh, blah, 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 blah. if you'd enhance if you'd like to enhance your enjoyment and knowledge with the correct pronunciations and meanings, please use MaoriDictionary.co.nz. So for you and me, there's <laughs> words like um, uh, far now. Fungare, yeah, or, you know, yeah. we know how those words sound, yeah. how to pronounce them. People around the globe don't. Yeah. So I remember, yeah. you know, we picking up Asterix books and there was Latin in there. Tintin books had a bit of yeah. German and, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, even X Men books, you've got uh, Nightcrawler saying Das Verdania Tovarich, uh, well, Colossus saying Tovarich, Comrade, you know. Yeah. This, 
this this is not a yeah. full bilingual book, but there's enough words there to leave kids in New Zealand with, you know, this is our land, this is our culture, you know, yeah. and, yeah. and it's you're sharing it with the rest of the, wo and with the world. It with, yeah. So what's amazing is uh, I think the breakdown is, I think it's about 15% New Zealand, 15% Australia, and then about 30% UK, 30% America. You know, it's crazy. And then a couple in, couple in Europe, basically. So we've had, we had over, I think we had about 200 backers the last campaign and 200 the campaign before. Yeah. Um, it's... Oh, the reason yeah, I was walking it, away was because of this. Just this yeah, week, yeah. I picked this up. Absolutely. You know, so um, those, th th those are basically your first comic books. So they're in this, every school library, yeah. every, you know. So my... my yeah. In, in an ideal world, I'd love for this land to be in a school library and be an evergreen yeah. project that could just sit there, you know. And, and it, you know, yeah. who knows? Um, it's had lots of I great mean, response. I, I've had people, I've had um, the guys, um, Trent, who did the Toreo um, for me, he, he just double-checked my Toreo and said, oh, well, we might want to change that word to that and whatnot. Um, he, he was over the moon when he read it. He said, I've never read a comic book before. I went out today and bought a whole bunch after reading that, you know, he was really into it. And I've got a couple of mates who are school teachers and are teaching, you know, you've got kids, um, at, at teachers in high school and primary school, and they've given PDF copies to their kids and stuff, or they're struggling, you know, slow adapters to reading and stuff. And they're, they're praised for it. Sorry about it, for guys. Getting, I think um, for getting kids engaged has been really... Uh, there's a fall on the line or something like that. I don't see anything wrong with me here, but um, I think uh, Mark seemed a bit of an issue on his side with on his um, on his maybe my um, internet connection. Um, yeah, so I'm like he was saying like um, so I mean when in the eighties we're like as kids in the eighties this is what we were reading yep. uh, and um, in our lunchtime and we were in the libraries we were reading Asterix mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think everyone can hear me loud and clear. I don't think uh, a roo is coming through, but uh, I can imagine what uh, the Whangarei uh, cell phone coverage is like. So I'm just going to keep talking for a bit. Uh, and oh, there he's coming back. There yeah, he is. We're back. Uh, <laughs> it was, all good. Mine's all good as well. So I don't know what happened there. So yeah, it just suddenly ah. said we're having issues. And cut it off. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like I was saying, like so, um, you know, this was our aid, uh, life in aid yep. in libraries, and yep. you had Tintin and that, and that was it. You didn't, yep. you didn't fault yourself yep. as a comic book reader. So when I went into reading for the next forever, right after coming out of high, uh, yes, primary school in the, in the eighties, forever. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> you had to go and call my real name out. <laughs> Doxing me on my own site, but it's all right. <laughs> so I mean, so we had, um, you know, we were. I don't see a difference in not reading comics going into it, and I think this is the cool thing about. Um, I mean, I was the only one amongst my peers while I was working, uh, in, you know, in Auckland at the time. I was reading all these comics. I was the only one who was reading comics. Everybody else was drinking and doing drugs and stuff, and I was the only one who was reading. I was the only one out of all my peers that I knew. Like there's mm. 20 or 30 of them and a close note was by five people, but nobody was into it. And yeah. I didn't say, I, I didn't tell them about it. No, no I didn't say, you I, need I, to read this. I, was just like, I, was. I, had the, I had the same thing. And every now and then uh, when the, the guys would come over to the flat or wherever we were, um, they'd have a look at my bookcase and just pick a book up and kind of flick through it. But, you know, um, I, I definitely didn't know anyone else. But uh, it's amazing, yeah. you know, the world's a very small place now. I mean, I'm talking to you live from yeah. Scotland. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. So, yeah. you know, it, it's amazing uh, the the amount of people you can engage. And, um, you know, the, like I said, the, the backing for this land is uh, – I can, yeah. at conventions. So when we're at conventions, we find a um, lot, of, lot of women and kids love it, love it. Um, mm. Which is which is great. That's fine. It's it's an all ages book, essentially. It doesn't talk down to kids. There's a lot there. There's yeah. a lot of deeper meanings and, and and things in there that adults can pull out. 
uh, and you know, for Kiwi kids and Kiwis in particular. So essentially, there's, there's a map in the back as well, and we've got this new map of this new land. And essentially, instead of north to south, it's done south to north. Uh, main reason because the uh, the early uh, the travellers uh, from Hawaii, key, they always saw mm. their their true north was actually the south, right? So we we've yeah. got this perception that up is north. So the Maori that pushes north. up pushes up North Island, right? Yeah. So the canoe the canoe is actually at the top, and so I've I've yeah. you know I've done a lot of research and spoke to the right people, and we made the decision right. We're going to flip the map. So maps the other way around. It's a different land mass as well, so you might not recognise it. Um, there's a few familiar names. There's a few different names. You know, like I say, there's the Bombay Gorge. Why is there a gorge at Bombay? Isn't there a hill at Bombay? You know, the White Tomb. Yeah. Um, new era. So uh, beneath the White Tomb, of Waitomo, is uh, there was the Aranui Cave. That's where the glowworms and all the stalagmites and stalactites that people see. But this is New Aranui. Um, you know, 600 mile beach instead of a hundred mile beach. All these little subtle changes. All right, I, I thought it was me, but um, we lost Mark again. Um, yeah, so I think I mean I, I'm really I really like um, we're all building. I mean, for myself because that's why I'm interested in what Mark's doing and um, and what he's done, and I and I think. The world building part of what Mark's doing is amazing, and uh, we've got him back again. So yeah, I was saying that like I, I like I like the world building part of what you're doing. So in finishing here, we've got 15 minutes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, rather than take, taking all your night, uh, all your morning over there in the UK, it's about <laughs> what eight o'clock now. Uh, quarter, to, quarter to ten. Quarter to ten now. Quarter to ten. So the last thing I want to talk about is writing, and yeah. we've discussed a bit of world building when you're talking about it. And you know, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't. We didn't really uh, lose them previously, so I think um, that's why I thought it was my side, but it wasn't this time. Okay, so the world. I mean, like this morning, like I mean, the other day, I think it might have been just yesterday. I had a, I had one line idea, one single line, and from that I started building, and so I started building 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 and i'm saying this is what happens this is why it happens and it's now it's going to turn into a sci-fi cop drama you know all this and all that and then we're going to go okay and i was like oh it's about this this is my one point of interest it's just this one thing that kicks it all off yeah. now what was the one thing that kicked off this land for you um i could say it was the, it was the earthquake and, and more about the geography and change and what that change would mean to new zealand like having having the Tereo in there and the bilingual stuff, that was just an aspect of the world building. It's become an important part of the book, but yeah. we could strip out. We we it doesn't have to be Tane or Maui and and stuff. But it doesn't. The book could be somewhere mm. else in some other place with some other name, but it mm. doesn't. It, the world building and all those little things just gives it more validity and more impetus and. You believe it, you know. So mm -hmm. I could, you know, it could be an alien planet where these gods and blah, blah, blah. The story would still work. Yeah. But I think yeah. having all these other other elements to it creates mm -hmm. something that's sort of real, real and tangible. And, and it works, you know, especially in the Kiwi imagination. But the, like I say, the best thing is it's cross boundaries into people from all over the world. And they're really into it. And as as Moana might have been someone's first introduction to Pacific Island culture, uh, this potentially is someone's introduction to New Zealand culture. Now it's a future New Zealand, <laughs> so yeah. everything's not you know but perfect. Still, but it is still the language and the culture is still there. And this is what yeah. I like about it. It's like it doesn't matter if it's future or past, but especially if it's future, that you're still utilizing the culture into it in that way. Yeah, and I think the really good thing when you do your will building, like you say, you, you could start at a singular point of entry of what you wanted to talk about. You could do all that work beneath the surface, you know, like a, like, a, like the old iceberg, uh, building and building and building. Doesn't actually all yeah. have to be seen. Oh, but, the top. Yeah. but 
through that research, you will find little nuggets of, oh, I could do this or go that way. So the more you build underneath, the more you actually influence your main story. And I think the, the classic one for me, which always makes me laugh, is the people of Tolui and Maui, they call they called the big change where people started developing powers and ability. They called it the fever. Now, I, I said, right, what is it going to be? It's like a, like a pterogen mist sort of thing event in humans, or is it like a mutation? We'll yeah. call it the fever. We'll, okay, fever. So <laughs> what I found out just through going back and looking through stuff. So Maui pulls up the stingray, right, the North Island. Now, a yeah. group... A group of stingrays is called mm. a fever. Yeah. So this, so I'd already designed, uh, and when I was doing my new yeah. map, I was like, okay, so the North Island's going to have, oh, it's going to kind of look like a palm print, like maybe a god's pushed it up. Yeah. But then looking at it as, a, or, or it yeah. could be five tails of more stingrays, blah blah blah. And then I discover, yeah. and I've already calling the event a fever, and then. Yeah, a, a group of stingrays is a fever. It's like that's just some crazy coincidence bullshit. But that's you know, and that's when you kind you know, of feel, uh, oh, it's, it's I'm like, on the right path. You know, I'm doing the. I'm, this has got to be for a reason. <laughs> if you're like spiritual, if, if you're like if you're into spirituality and stuff and consciousness, like you know, and I'm I'm all about uh, what it's called. Um, oh gosh, karma. I, I don't know someone. <laughs> Uh, there is karma, but there's the other side of it where we're all interconnected as human beings. We have a common consciousness. So, so somehow, you know, we know how, that's how we relate to each other on a, on, a, on, a, on a spiritual level, right? Because there are things that are common things of interest that hold us together that we know to be right. And so, yeah. and and, you know, somewhere in our brain, like this, this to be, you know, we know that this is the right. I have that all the time happen when I'm watching some shows. Like, have I watched this somewhere before? And I've never watched it. But in, a, in my brain, it's like I'm having deja vu. And and you're right. I think it's just, this is a cool thing when you do have that epiph epiphany moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and the previous your epiphany moment is like, hey, it relates to what? Wait, 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 what? This is so cool. That moment. Yeah. Any, anyone anyone can bang a story up but if you've got if you develop the base for it to stand on especially if it's your own property you know you know not, you say you don't have to do that for your wolverines and your batmans and your supermans yeah but if you look if you look at the, the core foundations of what you, if you build those strong you, a lot mm. you'd be amazed how much more comes out of that and you know it's just silly little things yeah. from currency to clothing to you know how how is this how does this world how does this land work you know what are what are the cultural clashes what are the um what are the sports oh sport for example so uh, in issue one um there is a uh, at the eden pit because it's not eden park mm. anymore <laughs> we we have we have them playing a game of kiolahi which is a traditional maori um ball sport um and you know it's basically kind of like uh ripper rugby sort of thing as well with the tags and you've got to yeah so i was looking for a sport was like, well how do we evolve uh there's going to be uh it's a talking scene I need action going on it. Let's have it at a sports stadium. Yeah. Right. What sport are they going to play? Yeah. And I was like, well, it couldn't be rugby league or rugby. Do, am I going to have to invent a sport? No, no. There's already a traditional Maori sport there, which is growing in New Zealand. Right. Called ki, ki, ki So it's like, yeah, okay, let's evolve that. Let's put that in there. You know, it's like, of course, that's, that's you know, we're talking about an evolution of a world and using things that were already there so yeah. you know that really helped inform my story you know looking and researching into stuff like that so yeah it's it, it makes everything more as a creator it makes everything more all the more rewarding when it all kind of works out yeah. so yeah we've been very, very lucky so far um fingers crossed uh, we've already got uh, i think about 106 people following the campaign before it's launched so there's a big part of Kickstarter. It's really hard because you're kind of shouting into the void a lot um, because everyone yeah. else is shouting about their campaigns. The more people you can get on board before you launch, the easier it is because if you, if you get a good start in the first 24, 48 hours, 
that helps makes mm. gets you over the finish line a lot easier. Because you what what happens usually is it goes like this and then it flatlines for two yeah, or three weeks. Goes, uh, yeah, I'll make that with my one. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. It's, it's not an easy thing. They're very challenging Kickstarters and uh it, it feels like you're yelling every single day, Hey, get my book, get my book, get my book, get my book. But if you don't yell, no one else will. So yeah, it's yeah, really but if, you're, yeah, if your book really, and you're passionate about it, I mean that's the thing because it's, that's why I like about the whole idea of talking to you about world building because you are the creator of this thing. You know, it's not anybody else. You know this place well. You know, you know how things work in it. And like you said, you had to do or come up with the answers to somebody before they ask you the answers. You know, the questions. And yeah. I think um, that is what that you know. That's what I I think. Um, I mean, way back when when I was doing sculpturing uh, and building, um, you know, clay 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 sculptures, big huge pots like a meter high pot. Uh, at uh, when I was at art school and. I would be there going, I'm God, all right? I'm, I'm God. I'm giving life to these things out of nothing, like mud. Like, this is mud. Yeah. This is clear dirt yeah. and mud and clay, and I'm building into something, and I'm like, I'm putting this to form. And this is basically, okay, it kind of feels like, okay, you're not really God. Of course not, not God. Yeah. But you are creating something out of nothing on a piece of paper, out of your head, and you, you're giving it form, and that form becomes other form. Has you know, word has you know, like they, you know, in the beginning there were you know there was a word. So you're yeah. giving life to these words by you know putting it on the piece of paper, and then you're giving it form by imagining what it is, and they're trying to describe it, but in the script. And then you're getting somebody else to come and say, "Is this how you think?" And then you go, "No, no, that's not what I think." And then you go this, 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 and you work together to mold it into what it is. And then you get other people go, this is my, this is my interpretation. It's like, okay, yeah. And you work together to build this universe that yes. only you got going, but somebody, you know, of course, you know, you, when you work as artists, you got other artists helping you to get it into, you know, three dimension of it. But you, you are it. You, you're basically, you know, what, what we say, like, you're Stan Lee, you're Alan Moore, you're, you know, you're Mark Miller, <laughs> because you're, you know, that's, I mean, no, all, I of, us, exactly. all of us created <laughs> like that. You know, all of yeah. us are creators like that. I mean, we're not we're not those people, but at at the bottom level of it all, we're like that because we are building these imaginations. Um, you know, because without that, without that starting point, there won't be no Spider Man. There won't be no Batman. There won't be all these. Um, you know, the crashes that started um, Superman. You know, with um, with the one of the, uh, I think it was was it Jerry Siegel or was it uh, uh, Jerry Siegel, Siegel uh, and whose father oh. died? You know, whose father was shot. You know, yeah. in real life, his father was shot, and so that sort of starts it off. And I'm like, okay, I mean, for me, it was like Red Dot is what started Red Dot off from a real murder for me. So I mean, we come out of fantasy as well as reality sometimes, and sometimes we, I mean as creators and world builders, it doesn't have to be reality. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be fan to be, but sometimes just education, you know, years of reading comments and saying, why not? Why not? Why not? So what got you to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do with comments. I'm, I want to do comments. Why did I do it? <sighs> yeah. Oof. Uh... <sighs> I think, Why this land? I, I saw a need for it, and I, I saw a space where a New Zealand story needed to be told that New Zealanders could grow up reading. That was as simple. That was a, the, the, the simple start of it. You know, if I was a kid in New Zealand, what would I have liked to have read growing up? You know, because we've got stuff from everywhere else in the world, but where's our thing? Yeah. Where's our thing that we can hang out, yeah. out on? And call our own, you know. I think uh, Terry yeah. Tio, Terry Tio, and the Gunrunners, that might have been, yeah. you know, Foot Rock Flats. Love that. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Um, oh, talking about Foot Rock Flats. Check this out. <laughs> Just this week, man, at the hospice. Whoops. Let me see. Can you see oh, that? brilliant! Yeah, yeah. Wall, wall, and dog, and. Yeah, what's, yeah. What is it like? Uh, Who's Well, well, dog. dog. And, and uh, who's the uh, other guy? I can't remember. Uh, 
Oh, I can't remember. Man, it's probably up there. I've got, I've got a, you know, the comics up there, and those are really, really valuable right now if you collect yeah. it. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So there's a place oh. for that. But I mean, as soon as I saw it, I was like, mine. <laughs> you know, there's like no questions about it. But you're right. So, Put Rock Brett, Terry Teo, uh, Terry and the Gun Runners. Who, was, yeah. who else was there? Billy Teed stuff, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, a little bit of that. But that was that was pretty much it. I mean, now Kiwi stuff. You've got Kate Katie O'Neill uh, doing some stuff for Omni Press, but that's not New Zealand stuff. You've got uh, Rachel uh, Smythe doing uh, Laura Olympus, but again, that's our Greek gods and, and monsters. But there's no one doing something that's a bit bit of us, you know, a bit well, of Aotearoa and and yeah. Me. <laughs> oh well, sorry. sorry well, I mean, sorry. Yeah, the... yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right. Yeah, you know, you know, no, but yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I know, I know what you mean exactly. I mean, there's no big, huge titles that look really stand out, and uh, I mean, yeah. because the whole this, thing is, this... we've been told that to 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 make it big, we have to Americanize our stuff. We have to make it for the yeah. world, whereas we can't we can't tell our stories our way, which is what mm -hmm. my our whole motto is for our company is like. I mean, yeah. for Plunge Comics. It's, our stories, our way. That's it. Yeah. Four so words. We've, we've, our stories, our way. Mm. So, the whole thing. I mean, everyone, all the all, all the all the art team, PR, uh, Lizel, uh, Hassan, and Rob. Um, every everyone's paid up front for me. So that's why it's taken. Mm. So, 2016, right? Did that 2016, yeah. the Miller World thing. Five hours. I, was, I yeah. spent years saving the money up and trying to get everything done. The main thing I did first, I made sure it was drawn first. So people say, well, why yeah. didn't you just color the issue three as you went along? I was like, no, 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 no. Because I needed to, I had a commitment and I, and I had a contract with um, PR to do the whole book. Mm. And uh, the fact that it's completely drawn, that's actually a huge weight off my shoulders. I'm not in this to make money. Yeah. There is no way I will ever get all the money back that we've spent on this, even heaven for the well, even if it I'm, was I'm hoping it, because of what it is, it. yeah. Let, hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> I'm hoping because what it is, I'm hoping that when you go into trade or when you go into hardcover, that you'll be able to somehow get back into New Zealand, good graces with the creative, North, um, creative New Zealand people, and show them what it yeah. is. And what yeah. the backing is, and to be able to go and you know get into ministry education, into the schools, into the libraries, and put it out there because we do yeah. need our own, right? Yeah. And this is my that's, this that's is my the one thing I, the have, I'm doing myself. I haven't mm. looked at that side yet. It is on the shopping list of things to do, but I was never going to go to them without a finished product because that's you it. know comics comics take a long time, long time to do, you know, and yeah, they're bloody expensive, um, you know. It's the driving force for this is not about making money. It's about leaving a resource for kids. That's that's the goal. Yeah. If if the goal was making money, I would I would be doing forty page done in one stories, not a hundred and forty yeah. pages. You know whatever the hell it is. Yeah. You know, I I like to think I couldn't find a New Zealand artist who was available for the long period of time I needed. To, to draw the book, yeah. so PR, well, PR, but the other PR thing does the two cost, things. It? Yeah, yeah, so PR is it also the cost? things. Uh, a little bit, but I've tried to, like I say, all the prints, all the pinups. I've, I've tried to use Kiwi artists for that, except where I've had a couple of mates help out, um, like uh, Os Osga helped out and uh, Zach helped out with the other one. Um, that, that's, that was just me, me trading favors with people who owed me, but I've tried to make yeah. sure where I yeah. where I can. So all the design work, all the uh, co fi the 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 pattern yeah. and and the design, that's all been done by New Zealand artists. Uh, all the tribal mm. new the new tribal logos and designs for each specific area, that's been done by New Zealand artists. Said Penny, um, you know, wherever I can, I've used New Zealanders to to yeah. help. But to get a professional looking comic book together. Yeah. I've had to go, I've had to use people from the UK, people from uh, the Philippines and people from Poland, you know. Um, Very understandable. It, it's, a, it's, I mean, it's a lot, it's, it looks, look, 
I mean, I think this stuff isn't out of place on with image on the cover. Yeah. You know, the logo. I, you know, I'm really happy with the team and what they've done, um, and done our best to be a, a, as inclusive and open as possible. To all, you know, we've there's there's some story ideas in there that are quite challenging. There's one character that yeah. he's got a he's got a drug issue, you know, and we don't skate around it. Right. And and I thought long and hard about putting that in, well, and it's okay. like. Because it, it's, it's a like, hard one. Um, because it's it's, it's, a bit it's based like on a friend. Like the drug, um, it's a bit like drink um, the drug ish, uh, the drinking issue with Iron, Iron Man alcoholism, right? They didn't skirt around yeah. it either. No, I mean right from the beginning. So it's how you it's, approach it. So how did you approach this one? Everyone, pretty much all the characters are based on a combination of people I know or, or you know, you, you write what you know sort of thing. And uh, one of the characters was heavily, heavily, his voice was heavily influenced on a guy I know. And I changed it up and, and I, I had him have a drug issue and blah, blah, blah. And my mate didn't have a drug issue. And then I found out this year that it was, yeah, he's, he's in prison now. You know, a guy I went to school with. And I'm furious at him. You know, because I've, I've found out I've been over here 10 years. It's real hard to, I don't know the everyday going on about some of my friends and mates back home. Um, and I had, um, I had one it, friend it, who was I felt close it to wrong. Me in the 90s. Yeah, I, I felt I had it. one friend. friend. Sorry, <laughs> I had one. Yeah, we're talking about each other because of the delay going on. So I had one friend who I grew up with and worked with, and you know hung out with in the 90s and no, sorry late 80s because of our work and stuff and it hung himself because of meth i found that out like a couple months after he'd done it and i searched for him when i moved back to auckland after coming to volunteer film school and then found out from his ex-partner i mean girlfriend that he went to australia yeah and had been on meth and depression and ended up hanging himself yeah, and I was gutted, man. It's not, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's I've been there myself. Here's the thing: I don't Here's think we should dance. Around, I don't think we should dance around. I don't think we should yeah. dance around these issues. These these are things that are happening in our world. So you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's like, no, we're going to keep this in here, and we're going to see. He doesn't have his full redemption story in this book, but there's a path there for him. So. Yeah. Yeah, there was some hard. I made some, you know. Ultimately, I thought they were interesting choices, and then they became very personal and they became hard choices. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when you're dealing with like, I mean, I have moments in like, uh, I have moments in weird, uh, like, like because I watch anime a lot, right? So, I have, there's moments in anime where I tear up. Hmm? There's been a couple of moments where I teared up in anime, right? I'm watching these cartoon characters. Uh, do their thing, uh, moving, and this is the thing that people don't realize that comics can be as real as any world where experiences we have emotionally. Yeah. And I think this it's, is where they don't realize when they start throwing off at nerds and geeks about, oh, it's, it's just your, oh, why are you so tied up at this? It's just toys. Mm. It's just a cartoon. Show. Hey, look, when I'm there's, listening there's, to there's jokes, people who watch there's people who watch Shortland, Shortland Street for the last 25, 30 years, and I think it's garbage, but yeah. you know, people love that shit. Yeah. So, you know, and I try the equate, oh, why do you spend all your money on this comic books? Why do you buy a woman's weekly every week for gossip rags? You know, and they actually cost more than a comic book. Yeah. And you throw it out at the end of it, you know, yeah. well, this is actually this this yeah. thing is actual value to me, and you know, and it's an ongoing That's, you know, they're collect yeah. you know, we're collectors as well. But I think yeah, we're collectors. I, we we hold on to the stuff. Yeah, so you know, I, I, hold, I don't. We hold on to the stuff. I'm probably too close to this land now because of the story. I'm, you know, the story's down and done for the last couple of years. I hope there's mm -hmm. moments like that in it. I can't see that anymore because I'm too close to the story. So I hope I hope there's a couple mm -hmm. of moments that people go, oh, oh shit, oh gosh, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, as I evolve as a writer, I'll be able to do more things like that. You know, but, um, yeah, it's been it has been a great journey to be on, and uh, very lucky to have a supportive partner with me as well. And she's she's always pushing me yeah. to go the next step. And yeah, so yeah, it's this land. If you if, if you're on uh, Kickstarter, just go to this land in the search 
thing and you'll see the first two campaigns in the third one. Yeah. I'll put it up on, on, on the comments later. So this is a, there is the other thing, of, like you're saying, talking about your partner, because there is a support base you need for someone like that. I mean, for me, I have my creative friends who do the artwork and stuff, and I can reach out to all these different people, support mm -hmm. base. Yep. Now, did you, you know, because, when did you move to, the, to the Scotland? Or did you move to the UK first and then so, Scotland? Yeah. I left New Zealand in 2010. I turned 30. Everyone was getting married and having kids. And I was like, fuck it. I'm out. And then um, yep. went to Canada for a year and lived and worked in Vancouver Island. And then uh, mm. came over to England. I was in London for two months and then Newcastle for a year and then moved yeah, moved around. Yeah. And then I'd been nine years in Scotland in this house. Longest longest place I've actually ever lived in one place, which is weird so, to so think how about. Did you, how did you end up in Scotland? Yeah, I mean, so, okay, hold on. So, yeah, so, so I've, I've, just one second. So I've realized there's a delay. I didn't realize that for ages. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up a pen just to let you know there's a delay on because we keep talking over each other and we're into this into the more nitty gritty stuff I suppose. So I'll go like this and then I'll wait a couple of seconds so we can so I don't end up looking like a fool talking over my guest. Um, all right. So how did you end up in um, Scotland? Right. Um, I was indoor snowboarding in uh, Glasgow. Uh, for a weekend, and uh, I pretty much more or less crashed into this uh, beautiful South African girl, and I heard her accent, and we got talking, and next thing you know, uh, I was uh, driving an hour back and forth to her house every night, and uh, then I just moved in with her, and I haven't left, and she's got my passport. <laughs> you overstay it. Well, you overstay well, in Scotland. Well, well, we need to get, like get you kicked out of there. Yeah. Let, let's call up immigration, you, uh, Scotland. I actually get, I got my UK citizenship two years ago. So, yeah. I would do, you know what's so do, you know what's, do you know what's crazy, though? We own this house now. I, if I, I, yeah. I couldn't afford to go back to New Zealand. Literally couldn't. I know there's housing issues for Africa there, uh, but this, oh. this house was cost the equivalent of £150,000. Uh, dollars, New Zealand, hundred fifty thousand New Zealand. You wouldn't oh. get that anywhere. You know, there's a three bedroom, big backyard. It's semi detached. Add, I mean, it's add attached another, to another house. But add another two hundred k. I know, it's nuts. It is nuts. Yeah, it, it, but I, it's, it's essentially, the town I live in is um, probably like living in what Whanganui, Whanganui, not not Whangarei, but probably Whanganui. What? No, yeah, Whanganui, Whanganui, Whanga, Whangan. Is Whanganui bigger than Whangarei? Or are you looking back for smaller or bigger? It's smaller. Where it was uh, 50,000 people here? Okay, yeah, it's smaller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's 50,000 um, here. So, yeah, it's tiny, tiny wee town. So, so how did a African move over <laughs> uh, get, it, get, get to Scotland? <laughs> And meet a um, Kiwi of all places, yeah. you expat. I know, I know. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. No, she came over with her mum um, uh, in her early, I think she was in her early 20s or so. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was just funny. Travel halfway around the world and end up with a South African. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But here's, here's what I like about, like, um, one thing, there's a difference. The, the the life of a comic nerd is very different to um, to a life of every other person because looking behind you, looking behind me, we just stand like I mean I spend sparsely as much as I can, but we do spend a lot of money on our on what do we love. Right? Oh yeah, and like you said, you haven't, before, you haven't even was, seen the, the soccer the and stuff. Wall. You talked about, yeah. You talked about soccer and Arsenal and whatever. You know, you know. Uh, my dad's from my my dad's from Manchester, so from Coronation Street, two doors down, uh, two streets over. So, um, I, I, 
there is this element of passion that some yeah, some people, the new fans, don't understand why there's these three, four decades or five decades, depending on the older, or six decades, depending on the older, um, you know, nerds over 40 group that I've, I'm part of, you know, uh, that we we have this this love for what we enjoy so much, started from whatever we started from to where we got in here now, that there's a passion and a love and... Um, and finding that right partner, as you have, right, who who backs you in what you're doing, which is the hardest thing in the world. If people don't realize, comics is one of the hardest things in the world to get into, unless you're breaking <laughs> your bones to get to do comics, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah, how you know? And I and I and I've met people from all over the world say the same thing, right? And um, I mean, I've experienced it myself. John has fund my, my own projects and stuff, but. Yeah, you know, to have a you know to have a uh, as they say a good woman behind a you know behind a good man is a difficult thing, especially in comics. So how did yeah. I mean how did that happen, man? I mean you said it, it was like you crashed into it, but seeds. Um, I get. I guess the thing is, uh, I I'm not out drinking and getting pissed with the boys every week and getting up to trouble. And when I do, I still go out and have a drink. Don't get me wrong. Hmm. But I'm not a bad. I'm a, I'm a happy. I'm a happy drunk. I guess so. I don't, I don't cause yeah. mischief or mayhem and, and whatnot. Uh, and I think uh, I, I think especially with comics, you, you know, you've got when you create your own and you actually have something tangible, yeah. and you're like, yeah. you know, something that you've made. There's something very important about that, and I mm. think a lot of people can identify with. You know, it's been interesting on the old Facebook or the friends from all over the world who, who have, who have backed, backed me and gone, um, Mm. you know, and I didn't, and they're like, Oh, wow, are you doing this? I didn't realize you're into that. That's really good. You know, friends who I hadn't spoken to for 15, 20 years. See you, Jace. Um, the it's people recognize, I think the effort and the hard work and, and the, 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 you know, the, the ability to create a piece of, yeah, I, I dare I say art. Oof. I mean, I guess it is anything you create well, is it? art, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think really it, it was interesting to see the appreci- appreciation across the board and, um, and Cindy's a creative person as well. So she, you know, she, she's, We've basically we, we built an extension on the back of the house, and it's basically a big cra- it's half TV room, half craft room. So you know, it, it's we're always making and creating and trying to create our own thing. You know, uh, it'd be great if we could make make some money out of it, but at the end of the day, you know, yeah. the, 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 just the art, just the act of creating, keeps someone it, it keeps something in you going you know and 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 i think people recognize that you know so uh and that's that's the end result of it i mean that's the good um not the end result but that's um what is it it's it's, it's a reward right that's the reward of and- all your hard work Absolutely. And um, seeing people, seeing people appreciate and acknowledge your hard work, and I mean, sure, you, you know, I mean, like you have book write, novel writers who spent three years writing just one single book, you know, and you, and then people go, yeah, he's a writer, yeah, you know, or you have a filmmaker and who spent three, three years bringing a movie to pass, and yeah, he is a, and then you have a comic book writer, oh, he spent a two, three years doing this, oh. It's just a comic, you know. Hmm. It's like, like you said, we were talking about well booming before. It's like the years that go into trying to work out all the ins and you know ins and outs of why they do what they do, and the, you know, and 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 the other thing I want to talk about we haven't talked about is the self censorship on what we bring out because I I really uh, as a as a creator I really like to discuss that because I think what people see on the page is not exactly sometimes what we want to put out or we do put out, but we always think more of it. Yeah, I think um, 
I think it's the same for a lot of things. Uh, what your ultimate goals and, and what emotions and stuff you want to put across. There's always someone who'll take it their own way with their own with their own viewpoint. You know, that's that's any story, any conversation. You know, why is character X doing this? Like, I I, I think you might even see by issue four, people who have read one, two, and three, people might have have attachment to these characters and say they wouldn't do that. It's like I just hang on. It's only four issues old. Yeah. People do form emotional yeah. and uh, attachments and ideals of what the, out of their beliefs to uh, fictional characters, yeah. you know, uh, and yeah. that's where you know you get passionate fandoms. You know, this character isn't like how it used to be or how it was when I was 12, 12 years old. Seems to be the magic number for a lot of things. So most people mm. uh, idealized version of Batman might be you know, guys my age would be movie batman 89 batman you know that or animated batman that's their idealized version of that character um yeah when you have new people giving voices to different the same character from different generations they mm. may your mindset may not mm. accept that they on that's not the voice i recognize but through mm mix of other medias and other perceptions and people's up up uh bringings and and what they've the, what information has formed them they may see mm. the same character at the same point of time as you as being completely different in their in their space mm. so it, i'm sure at some point hopefully you know there will be people mm. out there who will have their own fandom ownership over these characters we've created and their own ideas of what these characters could and should be. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think it's, it's important to note that everything evolves, uh, to, and, um, especially with comic books, what, what, what's interesting, like, so Wol old man Logan Wolverine died and he came back with hot claws or whatever. Yeah. Wolverine's always going to be around. Yeah. Just chill out for a year or two. Don't worry. He'll come back to. Yeah. Oh, do you want to play this game? You want to play this game? <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying you you brought it up. You brought it all, man, Logan. But I mean, it's you know, I mean, it reminds me of uh, what uh, what um, it reminds me of what Frank Miller said to Tom King of, of when he was doing a panel when he was doing a panel with um about Batman. I think it was 80 years of Batman. He did a panel and he said to Tom King. You don't know Batman, and I was yeah. like, "You're right, Frank. You're absolutely right. This guy doesn't know Frank. This this man doesn't know Batman." And I've never read. I stopped reading Batman because of Tom King. Yeah, because he uh, doesn't know uh, Batman. Yeah. At, at the same time, there were a group of people who very much did enjoy his his book. Hmm. Uh, it, it was. Tom King yeah. is a, a very process orientated guy. He's very uh, everything yeah. he does is very structural. Um, you know, yeah. some, he's got some great single issue stories. Uh, he's not as black and white with stuff as Frank Miller is with his Batman. Um, but Batman, eventually, so you've got James Tenney in the third, or uh, I think his name is. He's on Batman now, yeah, and I've a lot of people have, have a lot of people have yeah. come back onto it because of that. Um, it's not I've worth getting. It's that, not worth getting the pitchforks out if someone writes your character a certain way. Hey, Barker, yes. got a sharp A here. Mm. Up you come. Come on. Yep. Come on. <laughs> so. All right. So, so, in finishing, we we've gone over two hours. We're supposed to like go for an hour and a half, but I enjoyed enjoyed talking to you about what's going on. And uh, I mean, it's it's just it's it's really cool to talk with fellow creators i really enjoy that i think the process and discussion of how you get to where you are now because that that whole background of years of reading a comic and learning and then going through and finding out how how to do it and then trying to do it and then learning more to do it i mean even now i mean like i've been you know i'm still learning myself yeah to make yeah. sure that what i'm Everyone doing is, is going to work the, the best thing I would say to anyone is take your favorite comic book and reverse engineer it. So, 
look at a page and then if you, if you want to be a writer, look at a page from Watchmen, let's say, and des and describe and break down how how that page came into be, you know. Um, and then, then you'll actually understand. It's not like, you know, yeah, Alan Moore's descriptions <laughs> in there are insane. So, oh. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. That, that whole issue is a well, Rorsatch, you know. <laughs> yep. Look at it. Look at it all. It doesn't have to be that detailed, but that is some insane yeah. detail, level of detail. And that's just the way he writes. You know, and and the more information. And it doesn't have to be that way. It, no, no. Listen, it's comics are a collaboration, yeah. right? So mm. ultimately as, as a writer, you do have a viewpoint and, a, and an idea you want to be seen. Um, you could be specific about angles and uh, I want a mid shot, I want a tight shot, I want a wide shot, you know. But the best thing, I, the one thing I put at the top of every uh, script that I send out there is say, this is a guideline. If you have a better way of doing it, let's talk about it. Yeah. And 99% yeah. of the time, uh, artists usually do. I, I, I did yeah. uh, a media arts degree and, and did photography and film and all that sort of stuff as well. And um, yeah. I, I do have my own very specific viewpoint of how panels should be um and every time um pr the artist came back to me and said hey should we try this usually worked out for the better or you know very rarely said no to actually change that to that or anything like that for for 140 pages there were very few changes in what we did you know and mm -hmm. thumb thumb mailing thumb nailing is key to any artist out there yeah you, you know the more time you can spend getting your thumbnails right and your layouts, mm. get that done. That'll save you a fortune in the long run, and and making space for web balloons, <laughs> or because otherwise you'll Always be drawing on, drawing on stuff yeah. that'll get covered. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, that's that's yeah. A, that's the thing about um um you know I have a <laughs> for for being a writer on different different projects, right? Because we I do from strips to um, no text. Um, I mean no art um, strips to full on you know panels and stuff i um i have an idea and because i come from a background of film wide shot like you're saying wide shot establishing shot mid shot close yeah. up uh yeah. and all that an extreme close up right over here on the eyes sort of mm. thing you, you know but you leave it up to the like you said you leave it up to artists because mm. that's all what they what their talent is your talent is it well your skill is that writing and you're trying to tell the artist to do whatever you can in that panel and some panels mm. can either kill or break the comet because or, or the yeah. page i should say if it's yep. not done right so yeah you so there's a, there's a couple of panels uh double splash pages where there's a lot of detail and i went as far as saying look i'm going to give you a three page pay right for these two pages because mm -hmm. I know it's going to take you more time because we want to spend the extra time getting this right, you know. So th there's things like mm -hmm. that. I mean, we're not we're not Marvel and DC. We're not printing money out. But if, if, if it's a key element of the story, like the introduction to the White Tomb, for example, uh, I wanted to show that this wasn't just a barren place under the under the earth. And, you know, he, he went mm -hmm. and did it. Like, there's a lot of detail in that page uh, there. So, you know, I said, yeah, go for it. So... There's a few pages like that. There's a, there's a, you can't quite see it there, but there's a lot in the background that you can't quite see. So, yeah, it's it's important if you need to spend more time on it. And it's a hard thing because, you know, we're not professionals, but artists spend far more time on, these, on this journey yeah. than we do. Um, you know, if you can reward them for that extra effort, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, you know. It's, you know yeah. But, uh, I th I think um, the other and the, when you're collaborating, it's like to make sure that your uh, your artist understands as much as possible, but also willing to go back and forth with you on because here's what one of my uh, one of my artist friends said to me. I know what you, I mean, I know you have everything worked out in your head, but you need to tell me what the f is going on because I don't yeah. know what is yeah, going yeah. on in your head. You know, so, it's like it's like, who so, are these characters, and what do they look like, and why do they have to do this, and what what is, yeah. where are they, you know, what is all this thing going on? 
there's a there's a specific example and um i've got a couple of things in issue one that pay off in issue four and i needed to explain and it probably is in the, the director's cut actually i should go back and check those scripts and see if uh, those director cut um if i've blocked out those things oh baka sorry just gonna get rid of this pup out go yeah oh, you bastard Oh, he's walking all over shit. <laughs> ah, trying to sell those comics and he's walking on them. Um, so, well, he should be on the floor, first uh, of all. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a mess here. Go away. Go. Yeah. <laughs> you should see my, my space. Here, have a look at this. Have a look at this. All right. Like, that is me. Yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll, all I'll, over. Yeah. I just put in um, four four ikea dealt uh cupboards the other day just to stack stuff on because nice. i was just running out of space yeah. but um yeah yeah it's it's important <laughs> that you know it's important with uh like you say yeah. any anything you describe it's like if there's a gun on the wall if you specifically say there's a gun on the wall and he draws that gun that gun should probably be used at some point in the book, you know, otherwise yeah. you just wait, you, you're pretty much wasting the artist's time, but there needs to be, Oh, he's actually a hunter. That's a refer reference to the gun that the guy's an actual hunter or something like that. So there's no point adding elements to the artist's job that doesn't inform the story, you know? Mm. So yeah, there's a, there's a couple of little tidbits in issue one that pay off later down the road. And uh, yeah, Things I can't talk about just yet. So, yeah, which is good. Yeah. And hopefully I will have that opportunity. All it's right. all done. Uh, yeah. But uh, thank you so much for having me on, mate. It's been really good. Awesome. So in closing, um, I'm going to let you finish off. So we've got about two and a half minutes, and we've had you for two and a half hours, and I'm very appreciative. I'm really am, Mark. I, um, and um, I, all the best, and I'm really keen to get, some, get my hands on this book. And if not for the trade paperback, because I'm really, I like the entire thing, because I, so I can sit down and read for the entire thing. So yep. please give us your final words for the last two minutes, and then we'll close off. So, yeah, This Land, uh, Kickstarter for issue three, coming out August 15th. Just go to Kickstarter and type in This Land. Uh, for if You can try and get a copy from Mark One Comics in Hamilton. But uh, essentially, it's uh, what if you had the power of the gods and what if the gods wanted that power back? Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> I, was so, trying, yeah. I was trying to get, I was trying to put you on on by yourself. My bad. <laughs> Carry on. So yeah, the, the 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 yeah the 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 elevator pitch is what if you had the power of the gods and what if those gods wanted that power back? And uh, yeah, it's um it's uh, it's been really great getting this book out there, and uh, I need everyone's support each Kickstarter. So we can get to the end of the road, and maybe by Christmas next year we might have a uh, a hardcover. Oh, hardcover! That'll be a dream. Oh, can you imagine that? But um, or a graphic novel. So, yeah. Um, and if there are other Kiwis out there, I've I've got a couple of uh, spots for issue five um, for pinups, but that won't happen for a few months now. So always looking to work with Kiwi artists to get you know. Give give people uh, a bit of exposure as well. So it's not work for exposure; they get paid for the pinups. But these this it's been going. Yeah, all over the thing like, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody talks like exposure, exposure, but like you got to pay the artist. They, yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Awesome, but yeah, but thank you all so right. much, mate. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mark, and um, for everyone watching. Thank you for joining us in, um, joining us here and on the narrative. Um, Kakite Ano, be well wherever you are. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. From, live from Scotland, um, I know we talked over each other a couple of times, and it's because of the delay, and I didn't realize until later on. So thank you so much. I'm going to do this weekly, every week, and next week we have we have Quadzilla, and the week after we have Pop Daddy, and we've got this month covered. And then thank you so much. I'm really, I, I love this journey that we're all on around the world on uh, being able to communicate it to each other around just. You know, via the internet and I think it's uh, great for I guess in a way self-promotion but not only that but because of the other side of that which is like showing what we are creating to to the world and uh, as yep. Kiwis it's, it's nothing better than saying we're from a little town down you know down down under here in Middle Earth and 
we have something to offer and not just sport, not just all blacks, but we have comments as well to offer. And thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so everybody again and be well wherever you are. Thank you so much. Bye.